Located on the coast of the Adriatic Sea, this holiday destination has a historical old palace, beautiful nature, delicious ice cream, virtual reality, and much more. So let's explore this vibrant city where this ancient palace meets the sea. Hello everyone, today I'm in the beautiful town of Split. Now behind me is Diocletian's palace and we're about to go explore that by going through the Golden Gate. But before that, we need to see a giant statue and rub his toe for good luck. So behind me is the statue of Gregor Ninsky. And um, as you can see, you rub his toe for good luck. And so many tourists that rub his toe over time, it's actually turned into this color of gold, more the rubbing over the years. In the past, church services were held only in Latin, but Bishop Gregory didn't agree with this and started using the old Croatian language so everyone could understand, and not just the upper class. This piece of history is regarded to be one of the first foundations of Croatian nationality, and Bishop Gregory became the symbol of pride among the everyday man. So you're gonna make a wish? I will make a wish. What I will wish? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's a long wish. It's a very long wish, yeah. <laughs> So this is one of the smallest church you can find actually inside the Golden Gate. Um, it used to be a walkway for the Roman soldiers guarding the Golden Gate, but now they turn into a church. As you can see, it's so small I could probably touch the wall to the wall. This monumental court, called the Peristyle, used to be the living quarters of the Roman Emperor Diocletian. But today, with the beautiful church overlooking the square, it is now called the Cathedral Complex. To the right is where you can purchase tickets to enter all the main sites within the palace. We chose the Purple Pass to get the full experience. We had a big day ahead of us, so before we run around the whole palace, we needed some caffeine. <laughs> Now if you love a good cup of coffee, then this speciality coffee shop is nicely located within the palace. This is one of my favorite cafes and I highly recommend you visit it before you go and explore all the sites. And also, D16 coffee, the best coffee inside the palace. Yeah. Going to see the baptisserie. This ex-temple was for the Roman god Jupiter, but was converted into a baptistry in the 7th century. What's really interesting is this ceiling has all these human faces expressing different types of emotions. Even today, it's still a mystery why faces were used to decorate the ceiling. There is also a beautiful bronze statue made by the famous Croatian sculptor Ivan Mestrovic, but more on him later. This circular hall, which stands 17 meters high, is just steps above the cathedral complex. It really has perfect acoustics for a cappella singers who frequently perform here.
<laughs> should be new though. Maybe around. And if you want to see how high it really is, then check out the Ethnographic Museum where you can get access to the rooftop. But just be careful, as there is no protective railing. The museum itself showcases traditional costumes, crafts and culture of the Dalmatia region. It's well worth taking time to see this great museum. This treasury has several levels containing very valuable artifacts, books, relics, and shiny objects from the cathedral. So when you come to Diocletian Palace, you'll see uh, these sphinxes around. I think I've seen two so far, I'm not sure how many they are. The story goes, you cannot look a sphinx in the eye, and if you do, it will uh, ask you a riddle. And if you don't solve the riddle, you'll probably die. So if you walk past here, do not look him in the eye. <laughs> So after a quick lunch break at this food festival, we headed towards Diocletian's Dream. Also, make sure to check out if there's any festivals on before you visit Split, as there were several when we were here. Did it look good? Oh shit! <laughs> 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 um, I made a mess. Sorry. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put on your headset and start the movie. When I start the movie, he's going to come to you, tell you a story. Yeah. Diocletian's Dream is a virtual reality tour showcasing what life was like in the palace during the Roman Emperor's ruling. This was definitely one of my favorite things we did so far, and the owner is more than happy to chat about this amazing virtual reality tour. So if I just ask you to face forward for one moment, you should be seeing a man in the distance. Yeah, I see him. Okay, cool. <laughs> Staring at me. He's your friend. <laughs> Enjoy. 18 months or something like that, maybe two years to develop the project, do the script and, and uh, you know, collaborate with art historians in the city and, and things like that. So it, it took a long time to create it, but it was very detailed and we were really conscious of, of every part of the movie. Yeah. So how was it? That was amazing. Uh, Diocletian's dream, virtual reality, was just blew me away. What I really love at the end is like it shows you what it was back then and what it is now comparing the two together and also like there's moments where you think you're gonna get like hit by stones and stuff like that uh, totally worth it I'd highly recommend you go there first thing before you go to the palace so you can really see and compare the two but yeah definitely do it yeah it's crazy that we saw it all yeah. here <laughs> now we know how it looked like alrighty so now we're about to head to the church This cathedral is regarded as one of the oldest in the world. Diocletian, the only Roman emperor to actually see retirement, firstly used this space as his mausoleum. Diocletian was known for persecuting Christians, but the Christians had the final say, as this emperor's mausoleum was turned into this beautiful cathedral you see today. Very steep, eh? This bell tower, being 57 meters high and consisting of six floors, gives spectacular views of the city.
So we're in the crypt right now, and this is Saint Lucy. She was also persecuted for uh, being a Christian, and now this crypt is actually dedicated to her. Just outside the Silver Gate is the Green Market. Here you can find local produce such as olive oil, honey and fresh fruit. They also have this section where they sell clothes, hats and other touristy things. Yep, yeah. yeah, now it is. <laughs> That's it. This amazing promenade sitting between the palace and the Adriatic Sea is lined with palm trees, bustling cafes, bars and restaurants. It's definitely one of the most popular area of the city, running the entire length of Split's Old Town. Apart from relaxing and people watching, you can also book boat tours to the many islands around Split. Okay. Uh, the Blue Cave uh, goes with the whole tour and that's 110 euros plus 10 euros the price for the tickets to the Blue Cave. Mm -hmm. uh, So once you walk along the river promenade, you end up here at Republic Square. If you visit Split during the summer, then you may find yourself here, attending a concert or a festival. This Republic Square was built in the 19th century and closely resembles St. Mark's Square in Venice. It's definitely a great place to take a holiday photo. Alrighty, finally going to get some ice cream. <laughs> Must for all tourists, SIM card. <laughs> so we are back online. Yeah, this is really good. Unlimited data, 4G for one week. She said 85 kunas, and then you can top it up for another three weeks, being 65 each week. Unlimited. This is one of the best ice cream parlors in Split. They make their ice cream from scratch daily, only using fresh local produce. Also, the ice cream flavors are different every day, so you might end up having a tasty lavender ice cream like me. Orange and white chocolate. Orange with olive oil and white chocolate. How is it? And if you love sweets, then head to this local store that has won multiple awards for their chocolate. They're one of the only local Croatian chocolatiers who roast and process their own cocoa beans, which means their chocolate is very unique to Split. So stop by to try some great local chocolate. The chocolate is sweet and sweet wine. Mm -hmm. Sweet and sweet wine. Okay, uh, one of the cool stops is the People's Square, and behind me is the clock tower. If you're looking for a place to rest from all the sightseeing, then head to the People's Square. Here, you have many options from cafes, bars and restaurants. Just take a moment to look up and see this unique 24-hour clock written in Roman numerals. Let's do this. So after walking around the palace, we got some burgers and headed home to get some rest for the next day of exploring. Yeah, I feel like you could really uh, get lost. <laughs> and there's so many souvenir shops, restaurants, this is...
already day two. We try to do everything in one day. Could not do that. There's so much to would split. So we came here early in the morning and we're about to do some more exploring, um, maybe see some nature. Let's go. So yesterday, we walked through Diocletian's cellar. Now there are a lot of souvenir shops here where you can get some really interesting souvenirs. But they also have a museum located here as well, which we wanted to see. Okay, so here we are. Here we are in the basement halls of Diocletian's palace. And I think they filmed Game of Thrones here as well, right? The dragon was here. Yeah, I think the dragons. <laughs> Part of Diocletian's palace required a huge substructure to support the emperor's living quarters above. This basement cellar has a network of 50 vaulted halls, so this is considered as one of the best and largest preserved ancient complex in the world. It's so well served. So this way, please. This is also where they filmed some of the scenes in Game of Thrones. And if you're a fan of the series, then make sure to check out the museum located in the palace as well. This was just amazing to walk around and see the sheer size of the basement halls, but it's a little bit creepy too, so watch out for ghosts and dragons. Okay, let's do this. Oh, stairs, my favorite thing. So we took like five steps and we're resting already. <laughs> Okay, so we walked an extra 20 steps. Rest up number two. I love stones. <laughs> I love a good seat. <laughs> So if you want to get away from the city, then this huge park is a great option. Just be prepared to climb a lot of stairs. There are amazing lookout points all over the park and climbing to the top will give you the best view of the city. Yes, sir, you get I'm not even at the lookout point yet, but still, this is beautiful. But before that, we made a stop at this amazing museum dedicated to Ivan Mestrovic, the famous Croatian sculptor and artist. You will recognize his work from the beginning of this video. This was really cool to see his artwork from inside the building and around the gardens. It's a great opportunity to get some unique holiday photos. <laughs> Nailed it. Yeah, you got it. That's where we want to go, the beach. I think we're halfway down. <laughs> Just don't know how to get down. <laughs> I think this way maybe. I think so. We then walked around the whole park and got a little bit lost. On the way though, we saw some amazing churches inside some cliffs, plenty of beautiful views, a helicopter, and finally, I got to have my Bear Grill moment. Deep into the unknown right now, no water. I don't know if I'm gonna make it. What are you doing? Having my Bear Grill moment, please. Oh, oh my God, that's so nice. It's like a good couple of hours of walking, right? Yeah, I need food. <laughs> So after walking around for hours, we finally made it to this beach with a nice restaurant sitting on the coast. Unfortunately, they weren't serving lunch because they were booked out for a wedding. Luckily, we found this little side cut and at least we had some popcorn and cotton candy for lunch. So oh, that's our lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Carnival food. <laughs> So once we finished our sugar rush of a lunch, we ran to the very top of the park. 
One quick note though, if you're pressed for time, then head to the most popular beach in Split, which is only a 15 minute walk from the town centre. Also, after seeing the beach, if you walk 10 minutes up the road, you can get some great Croatian craft beer at this pub. There are a lot of Croatian craft beer to try, but this one by far was my favourite. <laughs> Made it to the top, uh, a lot of steps. This is definitely the highest point in this park and it's beautiful, you can see 360 all around this observation deck, beautiful views, totally worth it. And finally, if you're here for a while, then consider visiting the many small towns around Split. Just catching the bus number 37, you end up here in this beautiful old town with some great markets, historical sites, and a promenade with an amazing castle at the very end of it. It's well worth the visit. Thanks for watching. My wife and I had an awesome time in Split and its surrounding towns. Um, I hope this video helped you in some sort of way and I'll see you guys in the next one.